Outset, it's it's great news that the UK economy is recovering. It's great news that unemployment's coming down. Uh, the misery index, if you like, the addition of uh, uh, growth and uh, inflation is 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 um, of unemployment and inflation is, is low. All those are good things. Yeah. My concern is that uh, the Western recovery in general, uh, including the UK recovery, yeah. is largely built on uh, debt. Yeah. Uh, post subprime we seem to be addressing a problem yeah. of too much debt with more debt yeah. also uh, asset prices are extremely uh, uh, stretched and yeah. overvalued largely because uh, we are in the middle of the uh, most expansionary yeah. monetary policy in the history of man yeah. um, it strikes me that the the political narrative particularly from Westminster uh, is all about the economy improving the feel good yeah. factor um, uh, I don't want it to happen, uh, it doesn't uh, bring me any pleasure to write about it yeah. or say it, but I feel as an economist, a financial analyst, somebody who follows politics yeah. closely but also is a, you know, being an asset manager, yeah. uh, 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 somebody who, who delves deep into financial issues, that there are an awful lot of people out there who are actually extremely worried and taking yeah. money off the table yeah. even though they're not talking about it. It's very difficult to speak out and ruin the party yeah. when everybody's making money out of the party and there's a whole you know, uh, strata of, of people yeah. in the city, brokers and so on, yeah. who want to keep making hay yeah. and keep the rally going. Keep the party going while um, they still you know, can. The, the, the Western Stock Exchanges have risen hugely in yeah. the last uh, two to three years, even yeah. though um, there's been very little in the way of a convincing economic recovery, yeah. even though corporate profits yeah. have been down, yeah. even though um, you have a great deal of geopolitical concern out yeah. there. Nobody wants to think about the fact that yeah. uh, the Fed tapering will come to an end and there'll be no additional QE every month, uh, yeah. ostensibly from October. Uh, and the long-term valuations, the technicals on a lot of Western stock markets point to really quite serious overvaluation at this point. And markets are now essentially reacting according to whatever the central bank is saying. So sure. beyond any fundamentals really. It's But the other side of that as well is the central bank is now, and the, the monetary policy is essentially also a function of market of expected market reaction. So we saw last year in 2015, the Fed and Bernanke started talking about uh, tapering a big market reaction, um, and they held the taper off. tantrum, taper so them, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they yeah. held off. But then, when they eventually did, a, a, a number of months later, mm. they prepared the groundwork. They'd mm. made sure that with you know, the forward guidance, not brilliant, but uh, you know, at least th there was some sort of understanding that some burden would happen. And um, the re reaction, when it actually did happen, was very, very moderate. Very, in fact, mm. uh, even positive. So I think that, that central banks are now sufficiently aware that markets can be very destabilizing so uh, this time it's different right yeah well <laughs> look if, if, if printing virtually or otherwise huge amounts of money led to sustainable wealth and justifiably high asset prices then zimbabwe would be in in the g7 of course, uh, 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 and it isn't look of course the political narrative the narrative of of, of the stockbrokers and the and the and the commentators who rely on their city contacts because they're not capable of independent thought must maintain this narrative because so many people's livings are, are tied up within it. It strikes me that uh, stock markets have been rigged now, basically, somebody has to say it, but, oh, shoot me, um, for four or five years. I've always maintained, having been extremely skeptical about QE from the very beginning, uh, and I must say the CPS was an early convert to, to, to my position, if you like, I've always maintained there was some justification for emergency measures at the very beginning. No one wants to see a systemic banking crisis. If you've lived in emerging markets and in some weird and wonderful places as I have, systemic banking crises lead to social unrest, lead to, lead to riots, lead to regime changes, coups, nasty base human behaviour. Nobody wanted that. Uh, uh, my point is that QE in this country was billed as a 50 billion pound operation it's been a 625 yeah. billion pound operation uh, the, the 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 numbers proportionately is just the same uh, uh, in in the US it was uh, an emergency measure that because it helps the politicians to keep on spending and rig the gilts market 
and because it helps uh, the banks to get a backdoor uh, bailout and try and rebuild their positions without taking proper write downs and, and, and being accountable for their previously mad investment decisions, it's become a lifestyle choice, it's become crack cocaine. Your professor Michael Dempster is very convincing, wasn't he? And he says, you know, the last crisis was caused by cheap money and it's happening again via Q, as you say. Well, you know, I must take my hat off to uh, Michael Dempster yeah. at Cambridge, yeah. uh, and Nat um, Admati at, at, at Stanford. These, yeah. these, these, They're standing up and yeah, speaking yeah. out. These, yeah. these are extremely serious, yeah. studious you with uh, uh, people with from um, the most yeah. uh, prestigious yeah. Uh, organizations, uh, academic organizations on the planet. Yeah. They are not, you know, sitting in a bedsit day trading and taking yeah. punts to uh, 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 to try and get their name name yeah. in the papers. And so many academics, uh, so-called finance academics, are captured. They are reliant on yeah, on, so on the financial services industry for yeah. for their funding directly or indirectly yeah. now or in their future careers. Uh, uh, they hope. But increasingly, uh, independent academics, and these two are genuinely independent, yeah. uh, are standing Voicing up and, and their, talking. Their uh, and also, um, within high-end financial circles, a lot yeah. of people are really, really concerned. Yeah. And it's it's the job of people who cross these worlds to inject this, this thought course. into the mainstream. Yeah. I'm not saying there's going to be a crash in yeah. October when QE ends. Yeah. All I'm saying is that an awful lot of extremely sophisticated, experienced people yeah. I I'm are very worried, worried yeah. that there might be, and that will completely yeah. change the political narrative, yeah. and that is also something that will be of interest to people investing you know, their nest egg, their life yeah. savings.